The first section you'll have in your paper is the problem identification. Usually the problem will be identified in the first line or two that you read in a uh, journal article. Sometimes you'll know what the problem is based on reading the title. So don't go searching all over the place for this. It'll usually be right there in front for you to see. <clears throat> Identify the key concepts from the research question. That's going to have you looking into the um, um, method section of your paper. The purpose of the study and the expected benefits are often found in that first paragraph. Sometimes the researchers will make clear what their assumptions are. Sometimes they won't. Um, see if you can ascertain those by reading the article. Is there evidence of bias or biases in the problem identification? And identify the population of concern. But bi bias is something to be looking for anytime you read a research report, really any piece of literature. Um, people have their biases. You may not be able to ascertain what it is just by reading a, one research article. The review of the literature. There's usually a section called the literature review in a paper. Sometimes it will be called background. So look for that. Does it appear adequate? And defend your position. Adequacy often means that there's uh, a um, ample amount of literature being cited. Ample is going to depend on the topic and the length and scope of a particular article. Also in this section, when you're looking at the review of the literature, you want to jump down to the findings in the conclusion section to see if that literature is being um, consistently cited or consistently integrated into the um, into the um, the findings in the conclusion sections, or more the probably more the discussion section, discussion and conclusion, but sometimes in the findings. Hypotheses. Your author may or may not state what their hypothesis is. Sometimes you'll have to ascertain that by looking at the um, uh, the outcome variable and what they're doing. So if if they're doing uh, a 12-step facilitation for alcohol reduction and abstinence, uh, their hypothesis probably is that their 12-step facilitation is going to reduce or eliminate drinking, which would be a directional um, hypothesis. Identify the dependent variables, criterion variables, specify how they are operationalized, independent variables, predictive variables, how they are operationalized, uh, and finally if there's any control variables. Now operationalized simply means uh, how do they describe them? What do they mean by that? And sometimes uh, with fairly common uh, variables um, they don't go into great detail or they don't at all. Um, so if the dependent variable is abstinence, uh, that's pretty much uh, how it is operationalized. The research design. Identify the research design by name if possible, symbolize it, and briefly describe the methodology of the study. Very few quantitative research studies are going to be identifying their research design by name. However, sometimes you'll see 
it identified quite clearly even in the in the title so if you if you have a a title that mentions the word double blind uh, study you know that you've got a particular type of study and that may be the only place in the whole document that they mention that so so you have to read through a whole research report not just the methods section of a literature re piece of literature to um, uh, kind of understand what the research design is uh, briefly discuss the strengths and weakness and the appropriateness for the purpose of the study um, identify the kind of sample that was used and its size discuss reliability and validity measures how were the data collected how did the researcher handle attrition and missing data now with some of this reliability and validity uh, attrition may not be um, appropriate for a review of a qualitative study so again keep in mind that some of these subsections of these questions may be uh, not applicable or unknown data analysis what type of data analysis was used uh, <clears throat> typically if you're um, uh, doing quantitative uh, reviews you will see them mentioning the the name of the statistical test uh, on the qualitative side sometimes they will talk about taking a specific uh, approach based on a particular school of thought of qualitative study like a grounded theory approach or or uh, 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 meta narrative or something like that um, was this cho choice appropriate was it properly carried out are there other other better ways the analysis could have been done now some of these questions may be getting into a little higher level of, of um, research and um, <clears throat> um, and if you're not there yet in your studies just simply state that um, uh, you know we as social workers are only supposed to practice within the scope of our training and our expertise so if you aren't trained there yet uh, you know state that you you, you don't know and uh, um, don't try to try to fake an answer uh, but you can find out a lot uh, about um, uh, the type of, of data analysis uh, that they use by searching the literature results and conclusions so the results are going to be the major findings and is there any evidence or bias either in the research or the subject or the situation and um, um, so what are major findings um, typically with quantitative uh, studies you will see tables of statistics being reported and um, or, or the reports of specific uh, tests that they run on like for example a, uh, a t-test result or a result of an analysis of variance or a linear regression um, things like um, demographics tables um, those sorts of things are probably not major findings um, with um, qualitative research usually the findings are much more rich there's there look for uh, large quotes or if they have a if they state a particular theme a um, uh, theme of of um, one theme that emerged was uh, that um, uh, participants felt like there was a vast and supportive network that's that's a, a major finding and and usually under that major finding the author will have made a qu quote of their participants words usually it's a fairly lengthy quote so as you read through a finding section 
look for those long quotes that give rich descriptive information and you'll know you're, you're, you're looking at probably what the author considers to be a major finding. Now biases, again, they're often hard to detect uh, until you become very familiar with a body of literature. Um, but you can start to detect these biases uh, if you read a long quote and um, the author calls it one thing and you, and you think of, of something else that it could be called. Like, oh, well, what's going on here? So, uh, uh, again, this isn't, this isn't rocket science. Um, it's that ongoing messy place of research. And finally, um, conclusions. Take the conclusion section and summarize it down to a sentence or two. Usually a conclusion will be two, sometimes three paragraphs at the end of a paper. Get it down to a sentence or two. And uh, so no cutting and pasting here. Uh, and then ask yourself, did the conclusions follow from the findings? And particularly think in light of the literature review. And then kind of briefly explain your, 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 your point of view. Add an appendix or appendices, um, depending on your need. Um, so in, in APA style, list any references you use to justify your critique. Oftentimes, it's easy to read an article like it's some sort of a standalone monolithic structure, but it's not. It's something that has been built dependent on the literature that came before it and sometimes the literature that's going on around it. Um, so if you cite any literature to help understand whether or not this particular article you're critiquing is um, uh, good or not, is telling you something valuable or not, is reliable in that. Um, uh, we often need to have another article or two or three or four to be able to properly tear apart an article to make sure that it's 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 doing what it says it's doing and um, um, and sometimes you don't even need to direct directly cite um, another article in your paper but if you use it to get some background information about the subject uh, you go ahead and cite it. You don't necessarily uh, need to um, cite the article you're reviewing, uh, but it's, it'll go, it's good to go ahead and get it into practice of doing that. And um, um, uh, papers. Here to start getting used to writing in APA style. Um, do it to where it becomes habitual in every paper you turn in. Even if your instructor doesn't harp on or require APA style, it's still a good thing to be doing. Um, the title page um, should be properly formatted in APA style, um, which includes a running header, uh, title, your name, your institution, you're in the UMKC School of Social Work, um, an abstract is not really necessary here, uh, but for anything that you put together in other classes that, that has a, uh, a point that you're trying to make versus this one is just answering a bunch of questions, you want to you start learning how to succinctly restate your writing in an abstract. Running heads, those running heads are those titles that run across the top of each page um, and then 
uh, have the page number in a proper place. And you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of practice to get a running head and a page number formatted properly in Microsoft Word. But once you figure it out, it's not that not that hard of an issue. Uh, headings and subheadings. I really like to to uh, put that one out there. Uh, really learn to use headings and subheadings properly. In this case, you can follow the outline, uh, and um, um, and finally include a references page uh, uh, and any appendixes that you might need. So that's the assignment. Uh, again, if you're not at a place where you you fully understand uh, some of the analysis uh, questions, uh, you know. Be straightforward and say that. Part of the purpose of this assignment is for you to get an understanding of what you do know and don't know about uh, consuming social work research literature. And um, um, the expectation of this class is that people come to the research class with some amount of research uh, training in their undergraduate. That's not always the case. Uh, but um, most people will have had some coursework where they've had to learn how to to deconstruct articles like like you're doing in this assignment. So so uh, don't go into excessive detail um, and uh, you know keep the answers brief and you'll you'll do fine. Uh, if you have trouble with APA formatting, the uh, owl workshop uh, which is the online writing lab at Purdue University apparently it's been around for 20 years now uh, is always a good resource <laughs>